Hello, this is Brother Wilson. I want to do a short video today on a uh, man named Chad who goes, uh, his channel is Inward Burn. Uh, and uh, some of the doctrines that, that, that he holds here, his opinions about God and uh, the Lord Jesus and things of that matter. You know, the Bible warns us in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4 that uh, in, in these last days that, that men will give heed to doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. And in, again, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, chapter 4, it speaks of those who will uh, turn their ears. They'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and shall be turned from the truth. And they'll turn their ears from the truth unto fables. And I think that this man is a great representation of one of these false teachers. He uh, has been accepted in a free grace community that, that I have some friends in. Of course, I'm a grace believer. I believed in grace before they coined the term free grace because, after all, if it's not free, it's not grace, is it? And... Uh, <laughs> It's always funny how these new terms pop up. But uh, anyway, this guy, he's, he's, he's fairly well accepted there. And many of the uh, 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 more prominent teachers in the circles that I'm familiar with have endorsed his videos for uh, the entire length of time that his channel has been up. And uh, recently, some things have come to light. And, uh, and and I got to digging a little deeper on him. And I've got just a couple of uh, matters that I want to look at here real quickly uh, to, to kind of show you some of the characteristics to look for in a false teacher. Now, this clip is from uh, the Inward Burn video, Why Worship God? Does God Demand Worship? And we'll pick up at the 2 minute and 40 second mark of that video. And so, to me, worship, do I worship God? You know, not, I'd say, in the way that most people view worship, I guess I don't just blindly worship God or um, have this kind of slave mentality where I'm, and honestly, I don't even think God wants to be worshipped like that. You know, like uh, he's de like this person that demands to be worshipped and demands people to treat him to be like a slave to him. I don't think he's after that. And I know okay, the edit there was his, not mine. I can't edit his videos. Uh, if I did, I couldn't put them up under his avatar on his channel. But here we see that that Chad doesn't think that God wants to be worshipped. Or as he puts it, demands to be worshipped. Well, to demand something is something that I would have to agree that only a very small person does. When, when you look at great men, for instance, great men never demand respect. They command respect through their demeanor, through their actions, through the praiseworthiness of their character. And if that's true with great men, it's even more so with God. God, by virtue of his holiness, his perfection, his absolute total righteousness and justice, his power, his knowledge, everything about God, commands the worship, the awe, the adoration, the wonder of his creation. Why? In the Psalms, it talks about how the hills praise God. It talks about how the trees clap their hands. I believe that, that when the flowers look up into heaven, that they're giving glory to God. The Bible says that the heavens declare the glory of God. And to glorify God is a form of worship. But Chad 
thinks that that is a blind, subservient, slavish type thing, according to his words. Well, that's difficult for some people. If the only God that you've come to know is this God that says, believe in me, follow my commandments, worship me, bow down before me, or burn and go to hell. <laughs> you know, that kind of God I reject you, that kind of God I don't worship. But I don't see that that is the God. I think that that's a misrepresentation, misrepresentation of God. And, I mean, I will admit what's not a misrepresentation is that God, apparently, if... Okay, let me stop there. He's talking about the fact that God, who is worthy of worship, will reject those who reject him and that they will be cast into hell and saying that he doesn't believe in a God like that. He doesn't believe in a God of judgment. He doesn't believe in a God that would condemn. Well, he doesn't believe in the God of the Bible. Let's look a little further. He does exist and he is all powerful. He oh, is I got to go back here. Listen. And I mean, I will admit what's not a misrepresentation <laughs> is that God, apparently, if he does exist and he is all powerful. He just said there, I will admit that what's not a misrepresentation is that God apparently if he does exist and if he is all-powerful I don't know about you I've never heard anyone who believes in the God of the Bible speak of the Lord and so we we know God we know him he has revealed himself to us through the scriptures. His spirit dwells in us, illuminates us. We fellowship with him. We know God. There is no if regarding the existence of God or, or the power of God in the mind of a born-again believer. There is no question about that. The Bible says that he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Chad doubts the very existence of God. Is choosing to limit his power to stop suffering. I mean, I can't deny that. I can't deny that he could have stopped, you know, when he created the world stopped everything from happening and changed things i can't deny that and for some people and i'm not judging them at all for some people that's just too much of a hurdle to overcome to see how a good god could allow suffering like this and i don't reject somebody who does that I, it's that is a i think there are good reasons to reject christ and there are good re reasons to reject god and i'm going to get a lot of grief for saying that but that is a good reason a logical reason because you you look at God and all you see is evil evil God. All you see is a God that's hurting somebody. And so God's going to send you to hell because that's how you view him when he, when he would have the power to show you otherwise. That's not the God I believe in. That's not the, this kind of cruel God. And some people pick out certain passages in the Bible and think, well, okay. Now, now Chad has presented the arguments uh, that you would get pretty much from any atheist that you spoke to. God is cruel. God is unjust. God uh, uh, commanded the armies of Israel to, to go down and to, to slay all the Philistines and, and to kill everything that pisseth against the wall, every male uh, among them, that God wanted to drive the Amalekites completely from the land. That this God, this God, I don't believe in. Well, my friend, the God of the Bible did all those things. He did. He did. He, God did it. God told them to do that. And God had a purpose in that. And for a man to say, I don't believe in that God is in my humble view a rejection 
of the God revealed in the Bible. And we're about to find out exactly why it is that Chad rejects this God who is revealed in Scripture. Oh, this one verse just encompasses everything about God, or this one story, and we've got the somehow we've got the whole picture of everything that happened in the Bible as though it's all we have all the information available. And I don't I don't believe I don't believe in the God of the Bible. I believe in the God above the Bible. I believe the Bible is a is a starting post, is a it's how we are pointed in the direction of Christ and the good news of the gospel. But it's not a it's not like God is in this box and this this encapsulates God and uh, you know I believe that he is above the Bible. And I don't wor- I don't worship the God of the Bible. I reject the God of the Bible that, that a lot of atheists reject who did all these horrible things. You say, well Chad Okay. The Bible is just a signpost that points us to something that that uh, we cannot see. The Bible, the God revealed in the Bible is uh, not the God that Chad believes in. He said it a number of times already in this video. He has agreed with atheists that this God, this God of judgment, this God who who said of himself that, that I am the Lord, I kill and I make alive. He's the Lord. He breaks and he, and he heals. This God, this God who rained down plagues upon Egypt, this God who sent the death angel through Egypt and slew the firstborn of every household that didn't have the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. This God that drowned the armies of Egypt in the Red Sea after he had delivered Moses and the children of Israel by drying up the seabed so they could walk across. This God who opened the earth up and swallowed Korah and his followers into hell because they rejected him. This God, Chad, rejects. This God, Chad, says is cruel. This God, of the God of the Bible, Chad does not believe in. I don't know how he could say it any more clearly. I, I honestly don't understand how he could be any more specific about the God he does not deny. He does not believe in. Little. This encapsulates God and... Uh, you know, I believe that he is above the Bible, and I don't wor- I don't worship the God of the Bible. I reject the God of the Bible that that a lot of atheists reject, who did all these horrible things. You say, well, Chad, if he did all these horrible things, yeah, but he has chosen not to talk about that right now, and that might be another reason to reject him. That's fine, but for me, I just I guess it's because I see that there is love and grace in the finished work of Christ and that he is not, I don't believe he's demanding people to be worshiped. I don't believe he's sitting around on his chair. Uh, I don't know, just having pleasure and sending pe- this person to hell and, and all this stuff. I, I just don't think it's going to go down that way. I don't believe God and people say, Oh, Chad, you're just, I have to stop it here. I, I wish that I could play it more, but I don't have the, uh, the expertise to, to uh, edit the cursing that he's about to start doing out of the video. He, uh, he, he, he uses some foul language in here as, as he's talking about God and about worshiping God and, and, and is mocking about those who do worship God. And uh, I just don't know any way to present it. But the thing that I want to point out here is that Chad wants to, he has, he has rejected the God of the Bible. The God of the Old Testament, God revealed in the Old Testament, the God who walked with Adam in the cool of the day in the garden, the God who called Abraham from Ur of the Chaldees, the God who rained fire down on the Sodomites in Sodom and Gomorrah and destroyed them. He's denied the God who uh, has, 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 has revealed himself to us. 
over a span of oh, 2,500 years worth of writings in the Old Testament. He rejects that God. He rejects the God that the Lord Jesus Christ said is his Father, that he said is his Holy Father, that he spoke of in the context of Abraham and in the context of Moses and Elijah, the God that Jesus Christ prayed to. He rejects this God. He rejects the God who gave the law that condemns without realizing that Jesus said in John chapter 17 and verse number 3 that this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. He rejects the God of the Bible. And in so doing, he's speaking his own damnation. I mean, there's no way around it, my friends. He says it with his own lips. I don't believe in the God revealed in the Bible. I believe in a God who is above the Bible. I don't believe that he's he is uh, uh, properly revealed in Scripture. I have to 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 search him out and find him with my own mind, with my intellect, with my reasoning. And he has developed a God. He has contrived a God based on that. And it is that God, the God of his imagination, that Chad has called the father of the Jesus that Chad believes in. That, my friend, is a very clever, a very wicked way of denying the Lord Jesus Christ because he is revealed in the scriptures. You see, Chad doesn't realize that there is only one God. Jesus said, I and my father are one. 1 Timothy 3.16 says, Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 8, I believe it is. Jesus says that I am the Almighty. Back in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse number 3, the Lord God said that I am the Almighty. In uh, in, in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 17, Jesus said, I am the first and the last. In Isaiah chapter 44 and verse number 6, the Lord God Jehovah, the God revealed in the Old Testament, said, I am the first and the last. There's only one Almighty. There's only one first. There's only one last. And that Almighty God is the same one who formed man of the dust of the ground, the Garden of Eden. He's the same one who gave the commandments that condemn men to Moses. That God, that God of judgment, that God of wrath, that God of justice, that same God is the God who took upon him a body of flesh and bled and died on the cross of Calvary that he might redeem his fallen creation from the consequences of of their sin. There is only one God, my friends, only one God. Now, as if that weren't enough, let's go here. I had done a, uh, I had uh, sent him a comment uh, previously, and in the comment, I mentioned the, I said that I thought that, that, that uh, he was in error and addressed the issues and let's see what Chad has to say about my comment, if we may. Let's see. I'll start right hey, here. Hey, this is Inward Burn. And I'm going to take a moment to respond to a comment left by M. Wilson 702, 70201. Uh, M. Wilson, he believes that I'm unsaved. And he has some concerns about uh, some of the videos that I've made. And so I want to just, I'm going to read what he said and then just respond to a few things here. He said, uh, why are you so, why are you fixated on this being a salvation issue? The new birth happens in a moment of time and is eternal in its effect. And no one who has experienced it need worry for a second about their acceptance before God. 
Jesus paid it all. It's a done deal. The instant a sinner places faith in the finished work of Christ on his behalf. And I would just like to submit that I believe that there are a lot of believers who do still have doubts and fears and guilt about their own salvation. I talk to believers all the time who who still fear fear that they might end up in hell. I I talk to believers who fear being condemned by God, who struggle with guilt and their and um so this is um if you see this in me, I I just propose that I'm not the only one that there are a lot of believers for whatever reason and that's one of the reasons why I make videos is to help people um become more established in their in understanding their identity in Christ and what Christ has accomplished and and um and who they are in him. Okay. Uh he pretty well sums up the uh the th- the main thrust of his ministry and that is to take people who like him are not confident in their salvation, who fear hell and to give them assurance that everything is okay, that it's all right. He admits that that he himself is is filled with these doubts and fears and has to deal with them constantly. And you know that's uh, on the surface that might sound like a noble thing, but let me ask you my friend, my Christian friend, let me ask you this. Are you confident that you're going to heaven because I tell you you're all right? Or because your buddies uh, tell you you're okay, don't worry about it, everything's fine? Or is your confidence based on your faith in the Son of God as revealed in the Word of God? Is the witness that you receive that you are a child of God from the indwelling Holy Spirit, or is it from those around you? The Bible tells us in Romans 8 that the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirits that we are the sons of God. It's the Holy Ghost that gives us strength and and, and, and and that gives us confidence. It's not our intellect. It's not our friends. It's not the latest self-help book on the market. It's from the indwelling of the Spirit of God. He doesn't have that. So, you say, Jesus paid it all. It's a done deal. The instant a sinner places faith in the finished work of Christ on his behalf. Why is it that you, who constantly talks about the sufficiency of Christ and salvation, seems to have the most fragile grasp on the concept. You act like a man can bring you back under condemnation and squall like a mashed cat every time it's suggested suggested that a Christian should feel he has a debt of gratitude, not a payment, for the mercy God has extended to him by grace. Uh, I don't I don't believe we're under debt because of what Christ has done. I believe he is he has made us free free from all condemnation, free from all guilt. And that's a lot of times that it bothers me. Like at Easter time, I see people, they think about Jesus and, and, and being on the cross, and they start to feel this, this what you call this debt, this debt. Like, God, Jesus did all this for me, and man, I have all this guilt that I haven't done anything for him, and I feel terrible, and that's supposed to be positive. I don't believe that's positive at all. I believe that God... Look, I want you to notice how he does this. He he is taking his experience, his experience, and he's projecting it on everyone around him because all that he can go on is what he knows, what he's experienced. When when I talk about a gratitude of debt, any child of God will readily understand what I'm speaking of. The song at the cross, at the cross, it talks uh, uh, about uh, uh, about the love beyond degree. How that, how you behold it, and your eyes dissolve in tears. How that when you see the love of God manifested for us in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the degree that that He went to 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 
purchase our redemption when he died for us, when he bled and died for us on the cross of Calvary. Uh, my goodness, how could you not feel a, a overwhelming sense of gratitude? How can your heart not break at, at the manifestation of such pure, unadulterated, unselfish love from a holy God to a fallen creation? But he thinks that this is, that it's, it's guilt. It's, a, it's a, a sense of some type of religious duty. It's nothing of the sort. It's the answer of a heart that has been uh, regenerated to the God that saved it. It's what it is. It's a realization of what we are and what God has done on our behalf to bring us into a right relationship with him. Well, my friend, I bet if somebody pulled him out of a burning house that he'd be grateful to them and not nearly as flippant as he is about what the Lord Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. But let's go on. The gospel is good news. And that while, yes, I do I appreciate what Jesus has done? Yes, but he hasn't put this debt on, on me that makes me feel guilty. He's freed me from sin. He has united me to himself. He has uh, his, he's, Put me in his body. I have the works of Christ. I'm a new creation. I'm freed from law. I have eternal life. All of these wonderful things. And so I don't See, and there, again, there's another point that I want to make. When the Bible speaks of the works that we're judged for, you know, Romans 14.10, it talks about how that every, so then every one of us shall appear at the judgment seat of of Christ and and we'll give an account of ourselves before God. Second Corinthians chapter number five, six through eleven, I believe it is, where it says, "So then, every one of us uh, shall uh, uh, shall give an account of himself and the deeds done in the body." And First Corinthians chapter number three, when it talks about the judgment seat of Christ and how that our work shall be tried, what sort it is. Chad says that the only works that he has are the works that Jesus did, and that everything that he does, God doesn't see. Period. Whether it be good or bad, God has no interest in it. God doesn't see it. It doesn't matter. When he sees Chad, he sees Chad as, through, as having no works except for the works that the Son of God did. Well, let's follow that through to the natural conclusion, shall we? What did Jesus do? Jesus lived a perfect, sinless life. Jesus healed the sick. Jesus raised the dead. Jesus uh, made the uh, blind to see, the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, and the dumb to speak. Jesus stilled the, the uh, storms that were raging on the Sea of Galilee. Jesus fed 5,000. Jesus fed the 4,000. Jesus bore the sins of the world on the cross of Calvary. Jesus redeemed lost humanity. Jesus was buried and raised again the third day. Jesus is the Savior because of this work that he did on the behalf of sinners. Now, when Chad says that Jesus' works are his, I kind of get a feeling that, although he's not come right out and said it yet, that he kind of sees himself as taking part in his own salvation. I mean, I know, yeah, we're crucified with Christ, the life that we live in the flesh, we live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us, as it says in Galatians 2.20. I understand that. But I also understand this, that the Bible tells us as believers to be rich in good works. To In the end of 1 Corinthians 15, it says that we're to be always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Titus ends with telling them that are rich to be careful to maintain good works, for these things are good and profitable unto men. Ephesians chapter number 2 says that we are God's workmanship in Christ Jesus, created unto good works, which he hath before ordained that we should walk therein. See, Chad, just, he, just, he, 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 he is shipwrecking men and turning their spiritual life 
into a wasteland and given them a license to live a life of self-indulgence. And many of them who are completely unsaved, some are simply unstable, but most of them I do believe are unsaved. And, and he is inoculating them against the truth, teaching them when they do feel conviction that it's their old nature condemning them, or it's the devil attacking them, or it's somebody trying to bring them under the law. But it can't be the Holy Ghost convicting them and pointing them to Christ because, after all, his works are their works. It's nonsense. It is utter nonsense. Let's I don't go feel on. a sense of debt. I feel a sense of, of being unburdened and, and, and free in Christ. So I disagree that, um, you know, this debt of gratitude, as you call it, is something. Am I grateful? Yes. But is it a, like a debt of gratitude? No. Um. <sighs> Are you not moved by the knowledge that what Jesus did on the cross isn't just a religious, philosophical supposition, but a harsh and fearsome reality that involved real suffering on our behalf? And are you trying to make me feel guilty or something? I get the impression that you do not love the Lord Jesus Christ at all and alibi it by saying that anything less than the perfect love God gives us is not love at all, so why bother? Um, you are correct when you say, and I may shock some people by saying this, but I do not love the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. You will keep my commandments. I do not keep his commandments perfectly. Matter of fact, I don't even keep them at all. I, I and Therefore, at by Jesus' own, Jesus's own standard, I do not love him. I do not love the Lord, the Lord with all my heart, soul, mind, or strength. I don't keep his commandments. And I'll just save you the time. There is nothing good in my flesh. In Okay, here he goes into his uh, humble act again. He just told us that he does not love the Lord Jesus Christ. And the standard that he lifts up is the standard that Jesus himself gave before the uh, uh, the cross when he said that you love the Lord thy God with all the heart, all the soul, all the mind, all thy strength. He says, I, I can't love him like that. I don't love him. I don't love the Lord. And he does this as if there's some type of a, a, a humility attached to the act when he says, I don't love Jesus. I don't love him. Uh, friend, none of us will ever love God the way that we should, the way that he deserves. But everyone who is born again does love the Lord Jesus Christ. John, in, in 1 John, said that we love him because he first loved us. Chad doesn't love him. Chad has created a God that's a figment of his imagination, attributed to this God the birth of a son who is he calls Jesus. He has reworked just about every major doctrine of Christianity into a new age deception and uh, I, I don't know how that anyone can miss it I mean I, please let me know if you think I'm mistaken just tell me and uh, I look forward to comments on this but the the channel is inward burn uh, there's another one uh, Jay Cly who he's uh, and, and cahoots with and uh, I'm warning you watch out for these people uh, they're wolves they're deceivers they're liars they're preaching another Christ another gospel and they're under the power of another spirit and uh, it grieves me to have to do videos like this but 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 Paul told us to mark them which cause uh, uh, divisions contrary to the doctrine which you have received. And I'm marking him. So.
take it for what it's worth, my friends. I love you in the Lord Jesus. God bless.